Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Borg Warner. Feel good about driving. Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. And by Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. Hello and welcome to AutoLine Daily. Now let's get to the news. Well, it is official. PSA Peugeot Citroën will be getting big cash infusions from the French government and from Chinese automaker Dongfang. Each will kick in about a billion dollars and each will get 14% of the company. PSA is also selling more stock and borrowing more to raise over $7 billion to redo its product line. And this likely marks the end of the Peugeot family's control of the company, which has been in the family since 1896. It's a sad day for the family and a historic change in the auto industry. Here's my AutoLine Insight. Raising a bunch of money does not get to the root cause of Peugeot's problems, which are overcapacity and high operating costs. And when you bring more partners into a business, especially a government partner, it greatly complicates the organization and slows down decision making. I think PSA could have done this on its own and then formed a partnership with Dongfang without giving up ownership of the company. Last year, Ray LaHood stepped down as Secretary of Transportation in the U.S. and now the former cabinet member has a new gig. He's joining the board of directors of Proterra, a company that makes electric buses that can be charged in only 10 minutes. In 2011 and 2012, GM Ventures, which is kind of GM's in-house venture capital arm, invested millions in Proterra, but there's no update on where that partnership stands. Not long ago, we showed you the new Lincoln Navigator. Now Ford is showing off its version of the SUV, the Expedition. Styling is almost identical to the previous model with only minor changes to the lower front fascia area and the rear hatch. Like the Navigator, the big change is under the hood. For 2015, the Expedition will drop its V8 engine altogether and only offer an EcoBoost V6. On the inside, customers will notice a new center stack with an 8-inch touchscreen and driver instrument cluster. The new Expedition will launch later this year. Ram just started filling orders for the diesel version of its 1500 pickup, and it's already filled its allotment. In just three days, dealers ordered more than 8,000 EcoDiesel Rams. That's pretty impressive when you figure that Ram sells about 24,000 trucks a month, including the heavy-duty versions as well. Now we'll have to see if this is just an introductory blip or if orders continue to pour in at that rate. The Cadillac ELR has been on sale for the last two months, but you might not be able to find one at your local dealership. Edmonds reports that about 44% of Caddy dealers, 410 in total, will not be selling the plug-in luxury car. That's because most of those dealerships are located in rural areas which are not likely to sell many electric vehicles. Plus, it'll cost dealers about $15,000 to buy tools and train employees to service the ELR. So if they don't expect to sell many ELRs to begin with, it's not worth the investment. You know, a lot of people have wondered why GM did not launch the Volt as a Cadillac, and maybe this helps explain why it started life as a Chevy. Caddy just cannot hit the volume GM needs to pay off its investment in plug-ins. Hey, we forgot to report about the Olympic bobsled competition in yesterday's show. As you know, we ran interviews with Michael Scully last week. He's the guy at DesignWorks USA who designed the new two-man bobsled for the U.S. team. It took the bronze medal, the first medal for the U.S. two-man team in 61 years. And they celebrated as if they had won the gold, which went to Russia with Switzerland taking the silver. Coming up next, it is time for You Said It. Dow Automotive Systems, driving solutions in automotive, commercial transportation, and aftermarket with innovative products like Betamate structural adhesives. Lighter, stronger, safer. DowBetamate.com. And now it's time for some of your feedback. About that admission from Ford that it keeps some consumer data that it gets from the connectivity system in its cars, I think Wine Geek speaks for a lot of people when he says, I don't think any car company should keep information about me. When I purchase a car, I take title to it and I own all the information that it's produced. 
Why should a car company take any of my information free? I hope someone pulls the plug on Ford and any other company that takes my information for their use. Like I said, I think a lot of people think that way. HTG heard me say that Volkswagen needs to get another union in its plant in Tennessee if it wants to have works councils and still meet U.S. labor law. But HTG wonders, would another union trespass on the UAW's turf? You bet they would, HTG. Unions want as many members as they can get. And if the workforce rejects one union but approves another, then it's too bad for the losers. There's nothing they can do about it. Remember, there are several General Motors plants that are organized by the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers, not by the UAW. GW Groovy wants to know, John, do you think the spanking the UAW got at VW will affect their negotiations with the big three? Yes, I do, and I don't think it's going to be in a good way. I think we're going to see more confrontation and belligerence from the UAW. Remember, the current UAW president, Bob King, retires this summer and will almost certainly be replaced by a guy named Dennis Williams, who's already making speeches about how angry and outraged he is. The UAW suffered a humiliating defeat in Tennessee, and it's going to want to show it can still bring the big three automakers to their knees. Phil Hopewell has a few things to say about Volkswagen's disappointing sales in the American market. My own non line LOL insight is that you only need to look as far as the VW products that are not for sale in North America, like the Scirocco and the Amarok pickup, to see why sales are lagging. You make a good point, Phil, but I think it goes deeper than that. VW sales are down across the entire lineup. The Passat, which was re-engineered specifically for the U.S. market, was a one-year wonder, and then sales collapsed. I think VW needs to figure out why none of its vehicles are selling well before it starts adding new ones to its lineup. Lex wants to know, what are GM's plans for Opel? Will GM backfill Opel with some Chevy product rebadged as Opel's? Whatever happened with that Chevy Manchester United sponsorship program? Will that be nullified or transferred to Opel? Well, I kind of doubt that Opel will get rebadged Chevys. I think it's mainly going to be up to Opel to fill its own showrooms, though it could get some other GM products somewhere along the line. As for that Man U deal, I think you're right. I think it'll get switched to Opel. Hey, thanks for all your letters and comments. We do appreciate going through them all. But anyway, that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching, and please join us again tomorrow.